XINS is the Exorus Inertial Navigation System. It is a navigation system for fixed-wing aircraft. The data gathered from this device could be used by an onboard autopilot or by a pilot in a remote ground station to control an aircraft. The XINS consists of a navigation computer and a ground station. The nav computer sits on board the aircraft. It is equipped with a handful of sensors that feed data to a programmable microcontroller. The microcontroller processes the data and transmits a model of the aircraft's flight dynamics to the ground station. The ground station is a set of software that runs on a separate, personal computer. The ground station can display, track, and record the flight data received for analysis. The flight data we are interested in starts first with attitude. Attitude consists of three rotations, roll, pitch, and yaw. These three rotations define an aircraft's orientation about its center of mass. In addition to attitude, we need to know geographic location, airspeed, and altitude with respect to sea level. The navigation computer has four sensor types to help determine the desired data. These include gyros, or angular rate sensors, accelerometers, which measure apparent acceleration, a global positioning system, or GPS, and several pressure sensors. Modeling flight data from these sensors can be a challenge, especially aircraft attitude. First off, we can take the gyros, which yield angular velocity, and carefully integrate the data with respect to time to estimate how our aircraft has rotated. While the gyros can respond quickly to changes in attitude, the integration can only be approximate. Therefore, after some time has passed, error will build up and our attitude will be incorrect. So we need data, specifically reference vectors, to correct our attitude in the long term. One familiar reference vector is the direction of gravity. Accelerometers measure the gravity vector well enough to provide roll and pitch correction. We simply take the apparent acceleration measured, subtract centrifugal accelerations, subtract forward acceleration, and we are left with an approximate gravity vector. A GPS can provide a course over ground, or heading, which can be used to correct errors in yaw. The accelerometers and GPS provide an attitude correction rotation that is fed through a PI controller. The proportional component causes our attitude to slowly track the gravity and course vectors, while the integral component filters out long-term gyro drift errors. Geographic location is simply obtained from a GPS in terms of latitude and longitude. An estimate of airspeed can be measured from the pressure differential created by the aircraft flying into still air. We can also use the GPS speed over ground, compensated for our pitch attitude, to yield airspeed. And finally, altitude with respect to sea level can be determined from measuring absolute pressure. The nav computer is equipped with two altimeters. The first is the high altimeter, named so because it has no upper limit on its altitude measurements. However, it has poor resolution. The low altimeter has improved resolution but a maximum altitude reading of approximately 2.4 kilometers. This improvement is due to using an op-amp circuit to amplify the pressure sensor output and using an external 12-bit analog-to-digital converter. This gives the low altimeter a worst-case resolution of 1.6 meters. The core of the navigation computer is a microchip microcontroller that handles all sensor interfacing, arithmetic processing, and all communication with the ground station software. The NAV computer's GPS is a local sys unit that provides NMEA sentences at 5 Hz to the microcontroller through a UART connection. The sensors that remain, the inertial measurement unit, the pressure sensors, and the temperature sensor, are sampled 50 times a second. This gives the microcontroller a state time of about 20 milliseconds in which it must be able to sample all the sensor data, parse any available GPS sentences, update a direction cosine matrix used to model attitude, assemble all the flight data into a package, and finally initialize a transmission to the ground station. The data is sent by cable with an RS-232 connection. 
Data can be transmitted to the ground station as ASCII text and read out on a terminal program such as Real Terminal. Three character console commands can be received from the ground station. These console commands are pre-programmed to run commonly used subroutines to alter the behavior of the navigation computer. Lastly, data can be transmitted in binary form to the ground station's XINS GUI. The XINS GUI is an application written in MATLAB that requests datasets from the navigation computer, then displays the data in real time on a heads-up display. It communicates with Google Earth by creating a live KML plugin. This plugin provides Google Earth with a location marker, a track history, current airspeed, as well as a ground course. It can also record selected data in Excel spreadsheets. Currently, aircraft flight testing is unrealistic. This prototype of the XINS is rather large and requires a serial connection to the ground station. Instead, we used an automobile equipped with a 120-volt inverter to power the navigation computer and a laptop running the ground station software. Flight testing was first conducted along the Oceano Dunes. This seemed a fairly straightforward approach to measuring pressure at sea level. As you can see, due to weather conditions, we have a positive altitude offset of about 35 meters. The next test flight was conducted along the Cuesta Grade, just several miles north of San Luis Obispo by Route 101. This portion of the 101 provided a more flight-like test, with consistent high-speed turns and steady changes in altitude. The altitude approaches a maximum of about 480 meters. Given our positive offset, we should expect to see the XINS to report around 512 meters total. As we climb the Cuesta grade, we notice that the latitude and longitude points form a track on the Google Earth display. The airspeed and ground speed stay close to the posted highway speed limit of 65 miles per hour. The pressure slowly drops while the altitude steadily rises. This steady rise in altitude is supported by a small positive pitch attitude. Small fluctuations in the roll attitude can be seen during turns in the road. And finally, the yaw attitude tracks our heading angle with respect to north. Notice the max recorded altitude is 517 meters. This correlates with our guess of 512 meters. As we pass this peak, the pitch attitude inverts to a small negative angle and we steadily descend the grade. At this point in development, the XINS has outgrown ground testing it must be suited for installation on an aircraft next. Future design goals include designing a printed circuit board to reduce weight and power consumption, battery supplied power to allow mounting on a small UAV, and a wireless data link to replace the RS-232 serial connection. Given more time and resources, we hope to see this project take flight. But until then, this is Kyle Hohen, and thanks for watching.